Hi there. My name is Tom Woodford, and I am the college counselor with Hilliard City Schools. Um, thank you for being here today. For those of you that could not make the college jumpstart um, orientation last week, uh, this is for you. <clears throat> so the purpose of this is to make sure all of our students and our parents understand what this program is, how it works. Uh, there's a lot of what ifs throughout the year, um, and we are going to go over all of them. And so uh, what is important to know is College Jumpstart is College Credit Plus. So College Credit Plus uh, became a thing um, seven years ago. Um, in Hilliard City Schools, we actually partnered with Columbus State um, four years prior to that. And we created this package of courses where we would offer these courses to our students at the hub or the ILC. And the college instructors will come to us and we will have students from Davidson, Darby and Bradley sitting in classrooms together taking college courses. So college jumpstart is a Hilliard term. That's the uh, term that we use for this package of courses. Um, but college credit plus, um, college jumpstart is college credit plus. Anytime a student is taking a college course while in high school, then it is College Credit Plus. On the national level, the term that is used is dual enrollment. And so, yes, these courses and these credits will transfer to colleges <clears throat> inside of the state of Ohio. And yes, these courses and these credits will transfer to many colleges all over the all over the country. So why would students choose to do this? And so um, we have kids every year that really want, they know that they're gonna to go to college and they wanna get a taste of it. They've, they've really done well. They've taken multiple APs and honors courses and they've done very well in high school. Now they're at the point where they would like to challenge themselves with college courses. And so many of, of the benefits as students take these college courses, they get high school credit for them. State law says all college courses that are worth three semester credits, four semester credits, or five semester credits, kids eat, the kids earn one high school credit in that semester. That is a great benefit. Many times we have students every year graduating from high school going off to their choice college, and they're already a sophomore. We've had a couple students um, finish college early. We had one last year finish college in two and a half years. We have multiple students every year finish college in three years or three and a half years because of their participation in not only College Jumpstart, but College Credit Plus. Uh, we have students finish in four years, <clears throat> But because of CCP, they were able to maybe have a second major, maybe study abroad and do um, take advantage of some other opportunities at the college level because they started out with so many credits. But what is a concern <clears throat> is we have to make sure that students are ready. We have to make sure that they're ready for the challenges of a college course. And so these college courses are taught by college instructors. Um, parents do not have access to those student grades unless students want to share them with those students. So it, it's, it's important um, concerns too, if students um, do well in high school, but they might turn things in late, the Hilliard teachers allow them to do that. Well, that's not going to work inside of a college course. Many college instructors will not accept late work. And so if, if students miss a lot of school or turn things in late, um, that this is not the right program for them at this moment. So how this works. <clears throat> so the package for students in College Jumpstart Year One is all students will take English 1100 in the fall, Half of the students will take psychology 1100, and the other half of the students will take poli sci 
1100. That's what they will take in the fall. Students must earn a C or better in English 1100. That is the, the prerequisite to move on the second semester to take Composition 2, English 2367. If students do that, they will take English 2367 in the, in the spring. If they took psychology in the fall, then they will take poli-sci um, in the spring. Um, each semester, students will earn six semester credits, two high school credits. Um, all of these classes are worth three semester credits. So each course is worth one high school credit. Now, how is this set up throughout the day for students? So we have a group of students that can take these classes, 7.35 till 9 a.m. Um, we have another group that will take class from 9.35 till 11 o'clock. We have a group of students that will, will be in class um, 11.15 to 2.35 to 40-ish. And then we have another group of students that will be in class from 1 to 2.25. I know a lot of students have requested um, early outs and late ins. Um, we're limited to 25 students in a classroom here. And so we'll do our best to um, honor the early out and late in that students have asked for, but we cannot make any promises. Based on everything else that they've scheduled at the high school, we will try to schedule Jumpstart around them. And sometimes, it just doesn't work out that their late in or early out um, is going to work out into their schedule. It's most important for us is for students to um, take the classes that they want to take, take the classes that they need to take. In the order in which they take them is not a priority. It's, it's important that we understand that. And so I will do my best to make that happen. We will work on these schedules throughout the summer, um, but we will we, we will actually put these courses on the students' high school schedule in June. We also have to work inside of Columbus State's um, program as well, and I have to create their schedules in there. So making a simple schedule change is not a simple schedule change because we have to change it in our system and in their system, and that's not always easy to do. We will have students um, um, from all three high schools in classrooms together. The way this works in the fall, <clears throat> let's say your, your student has English on Mondays and Wednesdays. They'll be in English. Let's say they're in class from 7.35 till 9. They're in English the whole time. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, half the students will be in psychology. Half the students will be in poli-sci. That is their government class. They'll be in class for two full periods. Then they don't have class on Friday. We will actually have this advisory period two or three times a semester where we will focus on the student uh, and career, college search, and things like that. Um, um, but that's something that they won't have every Friday. So transportation, uh, if students drive, there's uh, parking lots at the hub where students can park. Um, and at the same time, if they don't have a car, they can go to any of the three high schools. There's a bus there that will pick them up, take them to the hub and return them after the Jumpstart classes are finished so they can um, uh, take the rest of their classes at the high school. Friday's advisory period. Again, this is something that we cannot make mandatory. Myself and Mr. Maggie will be there. Uh, we will work with students if uh, the college instructors raise a flag. That's a chance for us to talk to them. If there's been any kind of uh, attendance issue, we can talk to that as to them there. We're, we're going to talk about um, scheduling for the following year, college scheduling. We're going to talk about testing, ACT and SAT, college searches, career searches. We're gonna do various activities and school links. So we really encourage students to come to uh, these advisory periods on Fridays. Like I said, 
we have two or three a semester and it's a focus on them. Um, now we have 11 sections of English 1100 being taught next fall. Four of them will be taught by Pam Antos. Four of them will be taught by Mary Guerrera. The other three sections will be taught by a professor from Columbus State who will come to us. Both of these ladies have, have taught in Hilliard for a long time. They have taught uh, in our college jumpstart program since we started. Both of them have been instructors at places like Capitol, Ohio State, as well as Columbus State. Um, and so they've been very active in the college world for a long time. And they work very closely with academic teachers from main campus. So it's important that we understand there is a big difference between taking a college course and taking a high school course. One is the pace of the class. All college classes are semester long. So the class is 16 weeks long. Um, and when the semester is over and the students pass that class, they earn three semester credits. They actually earn one high school credit in that semester. The expectations, especially in psychology and many of those classes, that students will get a syllabus. They will be expected to have chapters read before classes start. That's very different than high school. Um, these college instructors are going to expect students to be prepared for class, have read and prepared, and be ready to have conversations about the chapters that are going to go over that day. That should be done prior to. Deadlines are important. So in the high school classes, a lot of times our kids are busy. Things are due on Friday. But we understand Turn it in on Monday, no problem. That doesn't work here. And many of the English papers are due by midnight on Sunday. Turning them in at 9 a.m. on Monday is late. And the instructor may not take them. The student might get a zero or might have points off. That's not up for any kind of debate. Um, Hilliard has nothing to do with these classes. We just own the building in which they're taught. All policies and practices are outlined by the academic team from main campus. Um, students must be in school. Um, stu students will be taught early on how to speak to college instructors, how to send emails and communicate. College instructors will communicate with students by using their email. So if, if something is sent out, Students show up in class and they didn't read their email. Not reading the email is not any kind of, of um, excuse for not having work finished. And parent in involvement. Uh, again, these students, yes, they might be minors, but they are taking a college course. They will be treated as such. Uh, they will be treated the exact same as if they were taking these courses down on main campus. Uh, peer support. I know a lot of our students in the past have set up um, um, study groups, just like it's done in, in college. A lot of times on Fridays when we don't have um, advisory, students meet at coffee shops and things like that, and they have their study groups there. Um, the day of the event, we had two current students uh, one from Davidson and one at Darby gave their um, perspective of what they've done this year. Both of them um, spoke very highly of all of their instructors, talked about being organized, turning things in on time, how important it is to communicate with the instructors. If you're not sure about a topic, it's important that you have those types of conversations with those instructors prior to or right after class. So we also had the academic advisor. All of our students by rule by the state of Ohio must be assigned an academic advisor from main campus. 
All of our Hilliard students have Michelle Miller Owens. This is her email. She advises students. If she sees that grades are not doing well, they she might email myself. She might reach out to um, students as well. Many times we bring her in during advisory to talk to students about the classes they're taking in the different pathways that Columbus State has. She'll talk about trans, um, transfer and how these classes will do that. So, but if um, a student has any question anytime, of course they can see myself as well as Mr. Maggie, but Michelle Miller Owens from Columbus State is the assigned academic advisor for all of the students from Hilliard. So how do grades work? So all grades are uh, calculated on the Columbus State grading scale. Hilliard's grading scale has nothing to do with this. And the grading scales from main campus are very different. In the English department, it's 65 and up to pass. In the social science department from main campus, it is 60 and up. And so it is very important that students understand this. All of this will, will be outlined in their syllabus. Um, state law says final grades must show up on a Hilliard transcript. That same grade must show up on the Columbus State transcript. So it's important to understand that we students will be using Columbus State's grading scale Columbus State's grading policies, missing class policies, because again, Hilliard does not own any of these classes. If a student fails the course, this is important, students and parents will be responsible for the cost of tuition. So Hilliard pays for these, but if students um, fail these courses, unfortunately, um, I will have to bill the cost of tuition to the students, it will be put on their home access account. So how are these students, how are these classes going to impact a student's GPA? All of the college jumpstart classes are on a five scale are, are, are on a 5.0 scale. And so they're weighted just like AP classes. The way the rule works for the state of Ohio, if a student takes a college course, if we weight a class in that same subject area, by rule, we have to weight those classes here. So not all CCP courses are weighted on a five-point scale, but all of the college jumpstart classes are. Um, it's important that students know, yes, it, these classes and the grades will impact their high school GPA, but they're also starting a college GPA. And that is very, very important. All of these classes can be used for OHSAA eligibility. Each one of these courses, students earn one full credit in a semester. So it counts as two halves in terms of OHSAA eligibility. Um, I have also submitted all of these courses to the NCAA and they have been approved. So if we have any students who might be college athletes, these courses will count towards your 16 core courses that you need. So if students do not have success, first of all, on average, about 93% of our students do very well in all of these classes. And those are the students that typically do very well all of the time. But every, every year we have about 7% of students that don't. And so we have to follow the rules that are outlined by the state of Ohio and by the college. First of all, in English 1100 that all students will take in the fall, it's important that they get a C to be able to continue for second semester. If they get a D, a 65, they pass the course, they get the credit, but they cannot move on to second semester, English 2367, because the prerequisite is a C or better in English 1100. And then a rule that comes from the state of Ohio too, if any student has a college GPA that is under a 2.0 GPA, the college GPA is not weighted. Colleges don't do that silly thing. 
only on the high school side. But if students have a college GPA of under a 2.0, then that means they are on probation, academic probation, and they're limited to one CCP course. So in College Jumpstart, College Jumpstart has two classes. So students will, if they have, if they did not get a C in English, then that's very easy. We automatically take them out of English second semester. They can take one class, either psychology or sociology, if they wanted to continue. If they want to continue, they must finish the next semester with a college GPA over a 2.0, or they would be dismissed from College Credit Plus for one full year. Again, this is not a Hilliard rule. This is a state of Ohio rule. So again, all of these classes, books, everything is free. Um, unless a student would fail those courses, then again, um, unfortunately, I would have to charge the student and the parent to reimburse um, Hilliard City Schools for the tuition of, uh, of those courses. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, again, communication with, with um, students, they have access to their Blackboard account, their grades can be there. You as a parent can ask them to see those. Uh, great courses and grades will not, grades will not show up in home access until the, the class is finished. Only final grades will show up. So nine weeks grades, colleges do not work by nine weeks grades. So at the end of the first nine weeks, at the end of the third nine weeks, you will not see a nine weeks grade there. Um, you will only see uh, final grades when the class is finished. Uh, students must use their Columbus State email. That is the only email that college instructors will um, use. They will not use their personal email. Um, and it is important that students are using their Blackboard account to enter grades, taking quizzes, and things like that. Um, so it is important that we understand too, if there's any kind of academic misconduct, this happens from time to time, especially in English now with the growing AI and chat G GPT, that if this happens, the, the college instructor is going to give a zero to that student. And then the student We'll have to have a meeting with the um, um, Office of Student Conduct on campus. And then how that works out, usually it's not punitive, but they will not allow students to take classes in the future without going through those steps. So it is important that students do that. So it's important that we don't have this issue. Students are writing their own papers. Uh, students are not cheating in class. That has happened a few times. Students and parents have not been happy when um, calls have been made to the academic affairs office on campus. Again, this is not a Hilliard course. We must follow the same uh, procedures that are done on campus. So important reminders. Remember, if a student, um, if they're taking English 1100 on Mondays and Wednesdays, if they're absent from school on Monday, that means they've missed half the week of English. It is the student's responsibility to get all of the assignments in Blackboard, uh, reach out to the instructor if needed. If students and families take vacations that are not around um, Christmas, in the holidays and spring break and the typical um, um, holidays that um, Hilliard is going to follow, then students are going to miss class and that could be a problem. If that is going to happen, it's important that the student reaches out to the instructor prior to. If the, if the instructor says they have to be there that day to take that test, they have to be there that day. Um, again, that's something the student is going to have to work out with those college instructors. 
And it's important that they are aware of all deadlines and dates, and those are followed. Okay, and so now every year, too, Hilliard starts school about a week prior to Columbus State. Um, we will have about four days of an orientation. Pam and Mary will work with our students to make sure their their C State emails are up and and working. Uh, they will um, get into their Blackboard accounts. They'll know how to use them. Uh, those um, English teachers will go through this with all of the students. They'll go over how to how to send an email to a college instructor. They will prepare them for the first day of class so they are ready to go. Um, if a student um, has an IEP or a 504, it's important to understand that those do not carry over into these college courses. So the student and the parent will need to reach out to the Office of Disability Services at Columbus State. Uh, they will want a copy of the IEP or the 504. Uh, you will have to send that in to them. And then they will send the student a letter and let them know what type of uh, uh, accommodations they can provide. Then it's up to the student to bring that letter to the um, college instructor so then they can follow those types of instructions from there. <clears throat> so what's next? So it's important to know that um, every student that signed up for College Jumpstart in Hilliard's um, home access account, that's great, they're in. But then what every student has had to do, and I have found a few students that haven't done this, they had to have applied to Columbus State and filled out the College Credit Plus application. From there, three days later, Columbus State will send your student their Cougar ID number. They need to put that in their phone. That is their ID number for campus. It is important that they know their Cougar ID number. It's important also that they know their Columbus State email address. When they get their Cougar ID number, at the bottom of that email are two steps that students have to follow. One is they have to um, uh, update and create a new password. By doing that, they will look at the top and see their login. That will be given to them. Students need to put that new login, their Cougar ID number in their phone. They need to also put their password. Then they need to move on to step two, and then they need to click on step two to fill out the parent permission form and the mature content form. When they click on that, it will take them to a Microsoft account. The Microsoft account is they have to log in using their Columbus State email address. So they will use that login that they were just given, and then they use at student dot cscc.edu. When they put that in, then it'll take them to their new password. They put that in, then it opens up these two forms. They need to fill them out, submit them to Columbus State. Without those two forms being turned in, myself and Mr. Maggie cannot schedule your student in June. They won't allow us to do that. If we can't schedule your student, then unfortunately we'll have to take them out of Jumpstart and put them into high school classes. Because trying to find students throughout the summer isn't something that we're going to be able to do. This is something that they've been told to do. They were given instructions on how to do this. They were given a document that walked through them step by step. We did the application in class as a large group. And so please make sure that your student has done this. You as a parent would have had to have signed the parent form as well. So again, turning in these two forms are very, very important. And then scheduling, like I said, uh, right now, College Jumpstart will be a placeholder in their actual Hilliard schedule. Uh, once we get the master schedule taken care of, and then when June, 
comes along, Mr. Maggie and I will then take College Jumpstart out of their schedule and actually put the um, actual college classes on their schedule as well as on their schedule with Columbus State as well. So if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to email myself as well as Mr. Maggie, uh, Mrs. Antos and Mrs. Guerrera if you have any questions about the um, English courses as well. Again, thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.